Hey, Retcon Raider here. There's still a few more days before the crowdfunding campaign for Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark comes to an end. So today I thought we'd take a closer look at the pre-alpha demo that Six Eyes Studio publicly released to help promote the game. It includes the first two story missions, which amounts to about 30 minutes worth of content. And that's more than enough to give us a good idea of what the developers have planned for the game. At any rate, let's get started. Good work. You handled yourself well in there, Anadine. Thanks, Captain. I don't feel like I actually did all that much, though. Things don't always end in a violent confrontation. Negotiations are also part of an Arbiter's tasks. Yes, Captain. Reiner sure is late, Captain. Well, you know him. He's probab... Did you hear that? I... Help! Please! Anyone! It came from the alley right ahead. Let's go! What exactly is going on here? Oh, pesky witnesses, said the creepy man. What a bother. You, hireling, dispatch these interlopers, he said to the hireling he probably should have hired to commit this murder for him. All right, well, regardless of the dodgy story elements, we are now in our first fight, which is a pretty straightforward one. Our objective is simply to defeat all of the foes. The tooltip here is telling us how to deploy units, but honestly, it's pretty straightforward. If you've played a game like Final Fantasy Tactics or Disgaea, you should already be familiar with the concepts they're dealing with here. See, all you need to do is click on the glowing space that you want to deploy your unit to, select which unit you want to deploy, and that's pretty much it. Now, because this is a basic tutorial battle, we can only field a total of three units, and two of those unit slots are taken up by the story characters, Kyrie and Anadine. We can fill our last slot with either Virgil, a wizard, or Lana, a mender, basically a DPS character or a healer. In this case, I'm going to go with the mender. By lawful decree of the Arbiters, I order you to put your weapons down and surrender. Now. An Arbiter? This is getting even more bothersome. Hireling, hurry up and take care of these pests. Yes, Lord Alphonse, he said, identifying his employer for us. As you wish, then. Anadine, looks like you're finally getting your first official battle. I... I'm ready, Captain. I'm sure you are, but why don't we go over the basics just to be safe? Every unit gets to act in turn. A unit's speed determines how fast their turn comes. Each turn, a unit can move to a location within their movement range. That range is also affected by the height of the terrain. You can see a unit's jump and movement scores under the bottom left portrait box. Each turn, a unit can also take an action. The action could be a regular attack, an ability, opening a chest, or gathering a component among some examples. You are free to choose the order in which to take your action and your movement, or you could skip one or both of these steps. Let's give it a try. All right, now then, let's take care of this scum. Okay, let's go ahead and beat the crap out of these guys real quick. We'll move Kyrie up adjacent to Lord Alphonse here, and go to her Warcraft menu. And we'll pick Forceful Strike, which is a basic attack that also causes knockback. And like many tactical games, if you knock an enemy into another enemy, they'll both end up taking damage. No one needs healing yet, so we're going to go ahead and bring our Mender right into the fray. She's a halfway decent combatant, it's just that I usually find a better use for her once people start taking a beating. 
But for this first fight, all that really matters is taking down Lord Alphonse as quickly as you can. You'll notice, of course, that every time any of these characters finish an action, whether it's attacking or healing or using some other skill, they gain experience points. Those experience points count towards increasing their level, which determines their overall attributes, but has no effect on their class, at least not directly. You actually improve your class by gaining ability points, which are only rewarded when you complete a battle. They're given out for successfully completing objectives and various other things. We'll get back to that in a moment. For now, it appears that the enemies have essentially boxed themselves into this little corner here. We'll pull Lana back and have her patch herself up since she's lost most of her hit points. And it looks like we've got Anadine coming up next, so I think we can finish this fight in one more move. Aye, enough, I yield. A wise choice, if a bit late in the coming. And victory. Scenario 1 has been completed. Now that was pretty short and sweet. But don't worry, the second battle is a bit longer. For now, you can see that we've been rewarded for our victory with a big stack of gold pieces, as well as a bunch of ability points. Like I said earlier, ability points are used to advance your class abilities, which is the primary way that you'll gain access to additional spells or combat maneuvers. There you gals are. Oh, I see you've been busy. Ah, Reiner, weren't we supposed to meet an hour ago? Your help would have been welcome with this lot. Well, no matter. This gentleman kept us company, and now it's time to show our gratitude with a nice and comfy cell. This... this is outrageous! I am Lord Alphonse. I am a noble. Release me at once! Killing an unarmed man, attempting to eliminate the witnesses, and resisting lawful arrest. I doubt your noble status will get you out of this one. Hmph. <laughs> you simplistic girl. Let's get this farce over with, then. Bring me henceforth to the Arbiter's Chapter House for my trial. Are you suddenly dumb, wench? I mislike the night's chill. Hurry and escort me to the Arbiter's Chapter House. Reiner, change of plans. We're heading to a luster to personally deliver our VIP guest to the main Chapter House. Haha, -ha, clever. I doubt the Lordling has enough pull over there to get out of this. Go and get everyone ready. I want us on the move at first light. On it. Now, let's get you more comfortable for the trip, then. This is outrageous! Keep at it, and I'll pull out a gag next. No one bothers to wash the gags in between prisoners, mind you. I... Very well, wench. What about this one, Captain? I doubt our noble friend there would expend any political capital to assist a mere underling, so we'll drop him off at the local chapter house. No reason to cart both of them all the way to a luster. Let's head to a luster and get this scum ready for his trial. The roads can be treacherous. We should go to the local guild and recruit some extra hands. An extra recruit would go a long way. Thanks, Reiner. So here we are on the world map. Given that the demo only includes two missions, it's pretty limited in scope right now. But as Reiner helpfully pointed out, we can in fact go back into Gelig City to visit the shop or the guild. Both of them are technically functional, but it's mostly incomplete features and placeholders. We can browse the goods at the shop, but only the most basic items are available at the moment. And while I could go ahead and purchase something like this wooden staff here, there's not much point in doing it. We could easily afford it, 
but we already have a couple of every item in our inventory, just for the sake of the demo. So instead, let's head over to the Guild House. The next fight will allow us to field up to six units at once, and we only have five at the moment. So it's in our best interest to go ahead and recruit someone. You can only choose from the three most basic classes at the moment, which is Wizard, Mercenary, and Mender. Since our group already has three mercenaries, there's not much point in hiring another one, at least not right now. So I think we're going to go with the second Wizard. We could always use more ranged DPS. There are several customization options, but I won't make you sit through watching me painstakingly customize the appearance of my new wizard. Let's just cycle through some random appearances here, take a quick peek at the portraits and pick one that looks good. Hmm. There we go. That one actually looks pretty acceptable. And we don't have a lot of portraits to choose from at the moment, but I think this one will work. Now I could change his name, but uh, I actually think Maxim is a perfectly good name, so we'll stick with that. Let's go ahead and make sure we raise the level of our new recruit. And he is officially recruited. Welcome aboard, Maxim. Kyrie. Don't worry, I noticed. What's happening, Captain? Stand back, Anadine. So, you spotted us, huh? I guess you arbiters are as sharp as they say. But really much friendlier than they say. Well met, friend. State your business with us and make it fast. We're on the clock. Hmm. I'll make it quick for you. Hand over that noble you've got in tow, and everyone can go on their merry way, safe and sound. What a splendid idea. Quiet. Indeed, safe and sound is always better, I say. That being said, just what is it you want with the man anyways? Funny you'd ask. From what I've been hearing lately about you Arbiters, I bet you wouldn't mind getting in on the action, huh? All right, here's the deal. This rich tosser will pay us handsomely to buy back his freedom. Hand him over and we'll give you a fair 20% to split amongst yourselves. And no one ever needs know an Arbiter was involved in this little transaction. That way you get paid and your reputation stays clean. Win-win. So, what do you say? Do we have a deal? Aw, oh, only 20%. Captain? Enough. Reiner, stop toying with this scum. We already know what they're up to. And you. Attempted bribery, intimidation, interference in official arbiter business. That's enough to warrant turning all of you into corpses. Get out of our way and I'll forget I ever saw your faces today. That's my final and most generous counteroffer. Take it fast before I change my mind. You crazy little... I can't believe we had to run into the one clean arbiter around these parts. All right, boys. Time to claim our prize. Leave no one standing. And we're fighting. It's a bigger fight this time. A lot more enemies, and we get to field a six-man squad. Fortunately, we have exactly six units at the moment. We have these three story characters... And then our two wizards and a mender. So, let's get them all out on the field. There we go. And now the battle begins. Now again, this is a pretty straightforward fight. We just want to take out all of the enemies on the field. It's pretty even at the moment, but... Things will change quickly if we can't take care of their potential reinforcements. We're going to start advancing towards that trap door over there, but we don't want to move too far, because if we do, we'll just be exposing ourselves to their initial barrage of attacks. 
Anadine, why don't I give you a quick refresher on items? In combat, any character can use items simply by selecting the items command in their actions list. You will notice items have a count next to them. That count is the maximum number that can be used in any single battle and is shared across the whole team. For example, if you have three potions and Reiner uses one, there will be two left to be used by anyone on the team. At the start of every battle, items counts are refilled to their maximum amount, so you shouldn't hold back on using them as needed. Lastly, you can carry new items, more items, and increase their potency through crafting. That'll be covered a bit later. Well, it actually won't, but that's because this demo only includes the first two missions. Let's go ahead and get the rest of our squad into a good defensive formation here. And here come the enemies. Now, of course, because we held back, they can't actually attack us just yet. Which gives us a chance to make the first move once our front line comes up again. Let's just get our wizards into position. I did forget to equip Maxim with a weapon, but fortunately he starts with a couple of spells, so he should be fine. Let's take a peek at our items, too. We've got three potions, some phoenix ashes, a rock, and a remedy. Alright, good to know. I've never actually looked at them before. Here come the Vangals, Grumpsh and Ersked. Captain, I have some misgivings about this trap door. I think they might have reinforcements waiting. Good catch. If one of us stands on it, it should prevent anyone from coming that way. We should hurry if we plan to block the reinforcements this way. I'd wager we don't have much time before they make their move. And of course, since this is still basically part of the tutorial, that's just to show you that there will be interactive elements on the battlefield from time to time. In this case, it's pretty straightforward. If we don't get someone on top of that trapdoor fast enough, then we'll be facing an additional two, maybe even three soldiers who will emerge one at a time every couple of turns. So let's start pushing forward. Hmm. Actually, that scoundrel just walked on top of the trapdoor. That's convenient for us because it buys us a little more time. We might actually be able to pull off this battle without any reinforcements making it onto the field. Of course, for players who want to deliberately milk extra experience points, they can let reinforcements emerge from features like that all day. But since the game will feature repeatable battles, there's not a whole lot of point to that. I guess it really comes down to individual player choice about how exactly they want to grind experience and ability points. Ultimately, I think it's important to remember that while you can theoretically grind infinite experience points during a battle, you're only rewarded ability points at the end of each battle. So that really encourages you to finish more battles rather than deliberately wasting time during individual battles. It looks like they're trying to cut us off from the trap door. But that's not too much of a problem as long as that scoundrel doesn't move. Now let's bring the wizards up and start dropping some area of effect spells on them. Virgil will hurl a fireball. Actually, let's reposition here real quick. There we go. Now he can drop a fireball on all three of those mercenaries there. And now let's bring Maxim up, see if he can drop an area of effect spell on something too. Hmm. Unfortunately, it looks like he was just far enough away that he can't drop a fireball without accidentally hitting an ally. Let's try repositioning him a little. No, I guess I'll have to skip this turn. All right, just hang back, Maxim.
Let's keep whittling down these enemy mercenaries. We'll engage the scoundrel. We can't rely on her staying there for the entire battle, so it's better to try to take her down and get one of our guys on top of it. Oh, scratch that. Looks like she's actually decided to reposition herself. That's convenient, but only if we can get someone on top of that trapdoor fast enough to stop reinforcements from spawning in. Kyrie can actually finish off this mercenary, so let's go ahead and do that. And then we can move her onto the trapdoor, so problem solved. Of course, now she's stuck there for the rest of the battle, so... We'll have to try to keep enemies close enough that she can still contribute. No one's badly hurt yet, but let's go ahead and stay ahead of the curve. Instead of having her attack, we'll have Lana throw out a heal spell. You'll notice for the moment that the MP count is actually just a placeholder. But like I said before, this is a pre-alpha demo, so... The game does lack a lot of functionality. That's the sort of thing that'll be put in once the funding is secured and full-scale development begins. There are actually a lot of things that might end up being changed before the final version of the game is released. For example, in some of the more recent updates, the developers have actually stated that they're not going to be using this infinite walking idle animation for the units on the battlefield. They've actually finished developing an alternate idle pose, which has the character standing still. It just hasn't been implemented in the current demo yet. Looks like they're coming after our casters now. That's no good. We're probably going to lose someone, but... Let's keep pouring some offensive spells on them. If we're lucky, we might be able to take them out before they can do too much damage. And yeah, we've already got that dog on the brink of death. But it's still in it just enough to really mess Max him up. Let's go ahead and finish this guy off now. That's another enemy off the battlefield. And I found Test. Did I mention that this demo has placeholders in it? Looks like the scoundrel is... flanking us. Ah, and she hit Maxim as if he weren't having a bad enough day already. Now the guy is on death's doorstep and he's blind. Kyrie's actually getting pretty beat up here too, so we're going to need to give her some medical support as soon as we can. But for now, Lana is going to have to focus on keeping Maxim alive. That gets him back on his feet, but one more hit and he'll be back on his knees. Let's go ahead and help Kyrie out. Unfortunately for Maxim, Kyrie takes precedence. If she gets taken out, then we lose our ability point bonus at the end of the battle. And Elizabeth's... Oop, actually, Elizabeth finished off Maxim in one swing. Unfortunate. Well, like I said in the first video, when you lose a unit in combat, they're not dead forever. They're removed from that battle, but they'll survive with injuries. The injuries mean that they won't be able to participate in a certain number of battles until they've recovered. So the player is encouraged to recruit and train a number of backup characters, just in case they have to rotate out an injured character. Well, there's nothing we can do for Maxim now. Let's just keep hitting these guys with offensive spells. That took out one of the mercenaries, but unfortunately that bizarre dog monster is still in it. And he's tearing Virgil apart now. In fact, Kyrie's getting torn up pretty badly too. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't think Lana's healing spells are really cutting it here, so it's time to pull out something heavier. Let's bring Reiner over here, and we'll use one charge from our potion to get Kyrie back on her feet. The potion's useful, but you can only use it three times per battle, so you have to be careful about when you choose to use it. Fortunately, it looks like Virgil survived being attacked, so we'll be able to use a potion to get him out of the danger zone as well.
Okay, we've still got a few actions before any of the enemies go, so Lana will toss a healing spell on Virgil. And let's go ahead and move Anadine over to support Kyrie. There we go. That finishes off one of the monster dogs. And now Virgil's up. Let's see if he can finish off that other monster dog. Ah, well, that's just bad luck. Unfortunately, that means the thing will get to attack him back. And he... Okay, he just barely survived that. Let's go ahead and move Reiner over, and we'll burn off a second charge from our potion bottle. That will pull Virgil well out of the danger zone. And since there are only two more enemies on the field, we can probably finish this battle pretty handily. Kyrie will have to hold where she is. Let's go ahead and use the Phoenix Ashes to bring Maxim back to life. I'm not actually sure if this prevents him from being injured, but I figured it's worth a shot. And we'll go ahead and heal Maxim before the Scoundrel can shoot him again. And now let's start harassing that Scoundrel. Unfortunately... Anadine can't quite reach her. Oh, wait. Uh, I have an item for this. Let's go ahead and throw a rock at her. Ah! <laughs> well, I didn't expect that, but I'll take it. That just leaves us with one more badly injured enemy to deal with. And Virgil's up next, so... Fireball for the win. Hey, and we even got one more placeholder component. And with that, our victory is complete. We get another stack of gold, plus a crossbow, and a couple of test items. And more importantly, we get a bunch of ability points for our troops. That'll actually be handy in just another moment here. But first... Didn't this used to be an inn? It burned down during a marauder attack last year. I guess no arbiters were around to prevent it, huh? If this is what that scoundrel said about arbiters taking bribes, I think he was grasping at straws. Things aren't anywhere near as bad as that. And yet... Here we are, lugging around that foppish noble because we're afraid the local chapter house is open to bribes. That's enough of a break. Let's get moving. I want us at a luster before nightfall. I'll make sure everyone's ready. And that marks the end of the demo. Kind of. There's actually a bit more functionality hidden in there, and for players who really want to keep playing the demo, they can do so indefinitely. First, let's uh, take a quick peek at the camp mechanic. Here we can check out all of our units. At the moment, we've only got the six. And you can see that Maxim is indeed suffering from an injury since he was downed in combat. Now, there's not a whole lot that you can do here just yet, but there are placeholders for most of the main mechanics that will be featured in the final game. Most notably, you can check out your character's abilities. Here, for example, you can see that Kyrie has the Mercenary and Mender class, as well as the level that she currently holds in those classes and the amount of ability points she has to spend. And in the current demo, you can actually unlock additional abilities. Up to a certain point, anyway. I haven't actually tried grinding enough to see what the limit is. But, let's go ahead and unlock one of these powers here. Hmm. I think Strike Power will be slightly more useful, so we'll go with that one. And, since I unlocked that ability, I've now unlocked two additional advanced classes. The Knight and the Scoundrel. 
The current demo also lets you swap out your character's current classes. Most of the class options will be locked at first, but as you can see with Kyrie here, once you unlock additional advanced classes, you can choose to set those as your primary class as well, which will allow you to unlock additional abilities in that class and potentially unlock additional advanced classes. Aside from that, you can also visit the crafting screen. This is where you'd use components to improve your battlefield utility items, as well as your worn items. But as far as I can tell, this feature isn't actually implemented yet, at least not fully. So there's not a whole lot you can do here for the moment. That's pretty much everything you can do in camp right now, but there are at least a couple more notable features in the current demo. First of all, it's got a fully functional saving and loading system. So if you want to, you can save your progress and come back to the game at a later time. Given how short the demo is, you might be wondering why you'd want to do that. Well, that's because the other feature in the demo is the patrol system, which lets you fight potentially infinite battles to continue grinding your characters up so you can try out some of the other advanced classes and abilities. At the moment, you can only engage in a patrol over in the crossroads area, which means that you're fighting on the same map over and over again, but it does at least give you the opportunity to fight some enemies that aren't otherwise featured in the demo's official story missions. And for the moment, that's pretty much everything that you can find in the demo, but it's an awful lot considering it's freely available to anyone who's interested in checking out the game. Speaking of which, if you want to check out the demo for yourself, you can find a download link over on the official Kickstarter campaign page for Fell Seal, Arbiter's Mark. Like I said before, this is a really promising looking project, especially if you're a fan of games like Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre, and there's only a few more days before the crowdfunding campaign comes to an end. So if you want to back the project, you're going to need to do it by October 30th. Oh, and remember, Although I do love talking about Fell Seal, the Arbiter's Mark, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website or the official crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter. Links are in the description.